So I have found a resource with which you can create 3D UI elements in Roblox Studio, and it's called Screen 3D, which I'm basically just going to overview in this video. But as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's just get to it. And feel free to go to this the forum post which is going to be down in the description. But anyway, here you have the usage and every information that I'm basically just going to overview, or at least almost every information. But to first get the model, you have to scroll down to here, where you are going to have this GitHub link, which is going to take you to this page. And from this GitHub repository, you basically just want to go to these releases and then either get the 1.0 version or the 2.0 version, which is right here. Now, this one is going to be the pre-release. So if you stumble upon any bugs or problems, then it's going to be best to comment them under this the forum post. But anyway, downloading the model is done by the assets and the screen for the RBXM, on which I'm basically just going to press and just save it somewhere. And then just go to Roblox Studio, which as usual needs to update. And well, right here we have an empty base plate. And well, to firstly insert the file, we have to go to Workspace, right click on it, and then select this Insert from File option. And from right here, we basically just want to navigate to the file that we just downloaded. And it's going to insert the screen 3D module script into the workspace. And from right here, we want to move it into a container that the client can access, like for example, the replicated storage. Okay, so that's everything for getting the module. And now we would need some kind of a user interface to actually use this effect on. Okay, so really quickly, I just made this UI, which only has this frame and all of these text labels. And this one is basically what we are going to work with. And really quickly, I'm just going to change this one to the left, actually, and just place it in the bottom left corner. And I'm doing this one really quickly because by default, this framework is going to change the offset of the UI from this top left corner. But anyway, right now we actually need to do some scripting. So I'm just is going to add a local script into the screen GUI. And this one I can just name menu or whatever, since right now it doesn't really matter. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually require the screen 3D by doing game get service then replicated storage and then just requiring the screen 3D. Then I need a reference to the screen GUI, which is just going to be script.parent and then a reference to the object that we want to apply the 3D effect on. So in my case, it's going to be this frame like this. Okay, so how do we change this frame into a 3D object? And this is going to be done with a method of the screen 3D where we are going to need to make a new variable that can be just called the GUI 3D or whatever where we need to use the screen 3D now and the new method. And here you can see that it's going to expect the screen GUI which is going to be this one that we made a reference to and then a display distance which I can just leave at 5. Okay, so we basically just created a 3D object from the GUI, but if I do a playtest now, it's not actually going to work. And this is because we need to make a 3D component from this frame that's a 2D element by making another variable called frame3d and using the GUI3D screen now, and then a method called getComponent3D, which is going to be right here on the top. And the argument we actually need to pass to it is going to be a 2D component of the GUI object class. And this is the previously mentioned frame. So I can just put this variable into here. And then we actually need to enable the component by doing frame 3D then enable. Now, if I were to actually print out the GUI 3D and then do a playtest, right now we are going to have this table with all of the part indexes and the settings. And these are going to be all of the instances that are going to be the children of the screen GUI from right here. Now you can see that we have a surface GUI now with this part right here. And this is because the framework actually converted this GUI into a 3D GUI. But right now we can't really see anything since we didn't change the offset of the frame. But you also probably didn't notice that it was a 3D GUI since again nothing really changed. But anyway, if I also go to the frame that we just created the 3D user interface of, we are going to have this offset value right here that we are actually able to change. And this is what's going to give the 3D effect to this GUI right here. And it's as simple as just doing frame 3D and then offset. And right here you can also see that this is going to be a C frame. So I'm just going to set it to this one, which is going to rotate our frame on 10 degrees on the X axis. And a really quick reminder, by default it's going to change from the top left corner. But if I actually were to do a playtest now with actually changing the offset, you can see that it's going to be rotated like this. So you can see that this is actually working right now. And I can of course increase it to be like 50 degrees. And of course I can also rotate this on the X and Y values too. So you can make a lot of different, well, weird stuff with this one. But anyway, what if I told you that we can actually change this offset? Well, dynamically. And that would be done with run service. So first I actually need to get it. 
and then do run service then render step connect a function and just copy this line right here and I'm just going to rotate it on the x still by doing math that scene the current tick and then divide this value by 5 or actually maybe 10 where if I were to actually showcase this effect you can see that this UI element is rotating and the smaller the value is going to be right here, like if it were for example 1.2, it's just going to be rotating faster, and also on a bigger angle. And if you wanted to, you could even make something really stupid, like having a spinning 3D UI like this one. But I don't really think there is going to be a point for this. But yeah, now there is also a topic on how to modify all of this to go from different corners of the UI. And well, that's going to be as simple as basically changing the anchor point of the frame, where 0 by 0 is going to be this corner right here. And on the X axis, I basically want to change it to, to this opposite one. And that's done by changing this value to 1 and well, moving the UI into a proper space. And how these corners are basically calculated are simply just set by the starting corner being 0, 0 and then moving to the scale which is capped at 1. So if this one is going to be 0, then this point right here is going to be 0.5 meaning the center and this one is going to be 1. And same thing is going to go for the y axis as well. So if I were to change this one to 0 0.5, the anchor point is going to be right here. Where if I were to do yet another playtest, it's actually just going to display like this. But yeah, that's going to be everything it's going to like making a 3D user interface, customizing it, and also giving it a little animation. But yeah, there is also a little bit more to cover, so I'm just going to go into the dev forum post now. And well, here it is. With Screen 3D, a 3D UI framework, that just works. Where I'm going to give a shout out to this guy right here for actually creating it. And they say that this is a fighting-esque 3D UI that you can set up without the hassle of render set loops or even arbitrary offsets or UI resizing issues. Well, anyway. Well, the usage I have already covered, right? But if you want all of the code, is basically just going to be available right here. We've also a lot of different information on what is actually going on. Like, for example, design of code changing the UI into 3D. And same with the framework, basically working on any GUI objects, like frames, text labels, text buttons, and so on. Then here we have the offset information, saying that all of the component 3Ds have the offset, which can be both used to rotate and move them relative to their UI parent elements. And I'm not saying that the offset pivots the UI element on their anchor point. And again, another usage example. And also we have a video preview of what I basically covered previously too. Then the 3D UI nesting, which I'm just going to again play. And then lastly we have this thing right here, which basically tells you that the UI nesting can be scaled essentially forever, like this. And another note saying that you can also nest 3D components with 2D elements, meaning you don't have to enable an entire tree of instances just to rotate the 3D frame. And that's actually well thought out. And right here is the demo which I'm basically just going to leave for you guys, since it's kind of outdated. And of course the GitHub repository. <laughs> and glory to GOG, yeah. But anyway, another thing that I wanted to show was basically this reply right here, with making an effect like this fighting UI. Where with changing the anchor point and basically setting this offset, you can make something that's actually really similar. And if you even wanted to indent it a bit, you can actually use this formula to basically achieve this one. And again, here is the code sample. And additionally, there were also a few cool examples that some people have been making. Like for example, this one right here, but the video seems kind of lagged, but this one is basically being relative to the camera's movement. And then this one is pretty nice too, since you basically just have the change of the offset whenever you, for example, zoom in the scope. Then again, something similar to the previous example, And I really like this effect of it going outside of the screen whenever the player uses the shift lock. And yeah, that's basically everything. So the link to this post is going to be down in the description. And now I'm just going to do the outro. So that's going to be everything for this video. Again, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also check out my Patreon page. And thanks everyone for watching. Hope you had a nice day and see ya guys.